those and their view models happen with the messenger. Okay? I will publish all those samples. Okay. Oops. <clears throat> so those components, relay command, messenger, the ones that I show here, again, there are multiple implementations of that, but the ones I showed are part of uh, the MVVM Lite Toolkit, which is an open source framework that I maintain. Uh, the goal of the toolkit is break the monotony, okay? In MVVM, you have to write quite a lot of code. Commands, you have to write your iNotify property change implementation. And honestly, you know, writing code, who likes that? Huh? Not, so you try to avoid that as much as you can. So by using the toolkit, you can write a little bit less code. This is the Get Started page where you have all the documentation. Uh, this is hosted on CodePlex. And V3 is actually really that mix. I didn't release it yet because I had to wait for Expression Blend Beta and Silverlight 4 RC uh, because everything is compatible with what you just saw. The goal is to keep it small and simple as much as possible. And everything works in WPF and in Silverlight with the same code, almost. Okay, there are just a couple of tiny differences. And since it works in Silverlight, it works in the phone as well. And actually, with version 3, uh, I prepared an MVVM Lite template, so a project template for Visual Studio for the phone. So you can do new Windows Phone application directly pre-wired with your view model. And that works. You have two DLLs, two assemblies. First one, which I call the essentials, with really command messenger that we saw. And view model base, it's a utility class with a raise property change method and also a couple of additional uh, properties, helper properties. And then what I call the extras, which is another DLL, uh, with event to command. Event to command is a behavior, we will see a sample in a moment, which allows you to bind any event on any framework element to any command. Okay, so you don't have the restriction, the annoying WPF and Silverlight restriction that you have to bind to the click event of a button base, okay? And also dispatch a helper, that's a very small class which helps you when you do multi-threaded applications. And then you have tools, project templates for Visual Studio 2008, 2010, Expression Blend 3 and Expression Blend 4, item templates as well. So you can really go ahead and say, file new project, new MVVM Lite application and run it. Uh, code snippets also to, again, you know, write less code so you can Type, for example, MVVM INPC for iNotify property change, and then expand it, and you get all the uh, property which is already written for you. So let's see demos. <clears throat> all right, so now for this demo, um, so this demo is set up a little bit the same as before in the sense that I also have a reference to the same WCF service. And I also have my data service, which is this high-level service that I'm going to use to communicate with my WCF service. So this data service still has the get customer class. In addition, it has another method called save customer. So now I can also save a customer back to the WCF service. And also a difference is that it implements an interface called iData Service. Now this interface is defined here with the two methods, get customers and save customer. So the advantage of declaring my service as an implementation of an interface, okay, is that I can have multiple implementations of that interface. For example, I can have a design data service which is pretty cool because I don't like to mix my design data and my runtime data, okay? So now this design data service is going to create a list of customer and 100 of them and return them. And I also have a dummy implementation for save customer. <clears throat> now let's take a look at the main view model. The main view model still has the observable collection of customers that didn't change. It also has an additional property called is busy. This property will be set to true whenever an asynchronous operation is running. Okay, so that, I, so that the designer can notify the user that something is happening. 
But for the view model, it's just a Boolean, so you can actually test that. Then it has two commands. The first one is called save customer. The other one is called refresh. Refresh is going to reload the list of customers, and save is going to save an instance of the customer. Also, what changed is that now I'm injecting my data service. I'm not creating it inside the main view model constructor anymore. So for the main view model, it doesn't matter what implementation of the iData service interface it gets. Okay? That could be a mock data service that you are mocking for unit tests. Or that could be a design time data service. Or the real stuff. Okay? Now another thing that maybe you noticed already is that I now have an additional class which is called customer view model. So why do I need that? Well, before I was, run, I was working with a customer WCF proxy, but that's a generated class. If I want to add properties to that class, I cannot because it is generated for me by Visual Studio. So by wrapping it inside the customer view model, I can add properties, for example, one property which is called is dirty. And I'm going to set this property to true whenever the customer has changed but has not been saved to the WCF service yet. To set this property, I'm going to observe the property changed event of the WCF proxy because remember that WCF proxies implement iNotify property change, okay, which is a cool feature. And every time any property changes, I'm going to set is dirty to true. And then my service is going to be responsible to set is dirty to false when it saves the customer to the WCF service. Again, this can be tested. Finally, I now have a class called view model locator. So now this class answers a problem, which is that, as I said before, when you have your view model directly in XAML, it works great with Blend, but the big problem is that you don't have any control over the lifetime of your view model. And also, you cannot inject anything, because it, XAML uses only the default constructor. So instead, I'm going to use this locator class. And let's do some setup. Now here in this sample, I'm using the Unity container uh, of the Unity framework. That's an IOC container made by Microsoft Patterns and Practice Group. Now it's not a must. You could actually go ahead and create your view models directly in code with new main view model and create your services and bind them together. A lot of applications nowadays use an IOC container of a certain kind, so why not reuse it for your view models? But again, it's not a must, okay? So here what I'm going to do is, notice that this is static, okay? I'm going to create, um, if I am in design mode inside Blend and Cider, I'm going to say for my iData service interface, you're going to register the design data service. And if I am running in runtime, for the same interface, I'm going to register the data service class. And then I'm also registering my main view model with a container control lifetime manager, which is basically a fancy way of saying that's a singleton. Okay. Um, now, why do I do that as a singleton? Well, you know, it's just more convenient in that particular case where I have only one instance of my view. One instance of the view, one instance of the main view model. Now, if I had an implementation, for example, you know, WPF pop-ups, where I have multiple instances of a view, of course, I need to register differently so that I have also multiple instances of my main view model. Okay? So it depends what you do. But that's just code. Then I'm going to expose a property. Oops. Here we go. And notice that this property is not static. Now, the reason why it's not static is that I cannot bind against static properties in Silverlight. So for code compatibility with WPF, I'm actually using non-static properties to expose my 